Live from WRAL News Headquarters in Raleigh, your number one source for local news. WRAL News, coverage you can count on. We have a heat advisory that goes into effect at 11 o'clock. One more day of that dangerous heat, plus a chance for some severe storms. That continues into the weekend. I'll show you what to expect. WRL Traffic Center, a crash has cleared on I-40 near Airport Boulevard, but the shoulder of the road still remains closed as um, emergency crews mop things up. You can still see the lingering delay. I'll tell you more about the crash and let you know how to avoid this slowdown. And an emotional reunion for families welcoming back loved ones from Russian captivity. The prisoner swap had freed several Americans. That story in just minutes. And of course, we are continuing to follow the Olympics. A local diver competing today will bring you that story coming up. Thank you so much for joining us on your Friday morning. I'm Michelle McConaughey. And I'm Chris Levengood. We did it. We did it. We're it's here. Friday. <laughs> All right. So we're not as impressive as Olympic divers, but we're still going to be here to bring you the news that deserves a medal, right? We'll give one over to meteorologist Elizabeth Gardner. She deserves the gold medal for the She's forecast not. deliverance, but maybe not because it's so hot. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Chris, I was going to say you might be pushing it just a little bit there. Um, it is pretty out, out here right now. I'm in the gardens this morning and uh, looking at mostly sunny to partly cloudy skies. It's still feels on the comfortable side at 78 degrees with the dew point 73. So it's already very sticky and we are well on our way to some dangerous heat this afternoon. By lunchtime, it's already going to feel like 100 to 102. It'll feel like up to 110 this afternoon. But today should be the last day that we see dangerous heat for a while. This afternoon, we're going to climb up to 107, 108, 109, potentially in the triangle. It could be hotter in some of our southern counties. We may end the day with a few isolated storms. There's a level one risk for severe storms today. And again, tomorrow. That chance of rain really jumps tomorrow. We're looking at a 40% chance this evening, but an 80% chance tomorrow with another level one risk for severe weather. And we're going to talk more about uh, how that will look coming up. 98 for the high this afternoon. That's exactly what we saw yesterday, but with a little more moisture, that heat index will be a little bit higher. 80% chance that we get a tropical system developing sometime in the next few days. That uh, tropical model plot trend shows that it arriving on the west coast of Florida this weekend, and then back out into the Atlantic. It could be anywhere from a tropical depression to a hurricane. And I'll show you why we're looking at such different solutions for this coming up. All right, updating some breaking news we've been following here in the WR Traffic Center. A crash on I-40 westbound the airport boulevard has cleared. Vehicle overturned and uh, the tow truck pulled it over a little while ago, but the shoulder of the road is still blocked. You can see emergency uh, vehicles there still trying to uh, mop things up a little bit. And you also see the lingering delays it's causing there on I-40 westbound near Airport Boulevard. Here's a look at what it looks like on our live traffic sensors this morning. That used to be red and yellow, but right now we're just seeing a, a bit of a slowdown there on uh, I-40 I westbound near Airport Boulevard. If you have an opportunity and you're going to the airport this morning in the next few minutes, of course, that's the Arden International right there. I wouldn't change your plans in terms of I-40 westbound because you can always get off an aviation parkway right there. If you're still concerned about the slowdown, just I-70 or I-540 might be alternate routes in terms of getting you around the uh, slowdown that's right now happening on I-40 westbound. We are seeing this serious crash there in Durham at US-15 at Fordham Boulevard in the westbound lanes. A little bit of a slowdown there uh, on, in the northbound lanes or the westbound lanes, I should say, of Fordham Boulevard. I'll keep an eye on that and let you know how much it will continue to affect your morning commute, particularly if you have to navigate Fordham Boulevard this morning. All right, keep us posted on that, Ken. Thank you. Covering Wake County this morning, the heat is causing major disruptions at Wake County schools. Moore Square Magnet Middle School will be closed today because of air conditioning issues. It is the second Wake County school to close this week. And WREL's Kelsey Coffey joins us live from downtown Raleigh. Kelsey, these students were sent home yesterday because of these issues. Chris, exactly. Students won't be headed through the front entrance this morning of Moore Square Magnet Middle uh, because of these HVAC issues. Now, you heard Elizabeth mention earlier that we were under a heat advisory with feels like temperatures over 100 degrees. This is the worst time to be without AC. Students were dismissed early yesterday from Moore Square Middle. This is one of two Wake County schools that were forced to close in the past two days, all because of HVAC problems. Lake Myra Elementary students are returning to the classroom this morning after closing Wednesday. Schools closed more than 40 times in the last year because of failing HVAC systems. This from Wake County School Board Chair Chris Haggerty. He says multiple schools report HVAC issues every week. There's a backlog on work orders for old HVAC systems. 
many of our HVAC units are aging, and we just don't have enough specialists on staff to keep up with maintenance and repairs. All should be on the lookout for an update as far as when students can return to the classroom. We'll be sure to let you know when that update is released. Kelsey Coffey, WRL News, live in Raleigh. WRL is following a breaking development this morning. Newly freed prisoners are back in America. They arrived after a significant prisoner exchange with Russia. The plane arrived at Joint Base Andrews in Maryland just before midnight. The group includes Evan Gershkovich, a Wall Street Journal reporter, Alsu Kermasheva, an editor for Radio Free Europe, and Paul Whelan, a U.S. Marine veteran. President Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris were there to greet them. This is just an extraordinary testament to the importance of having a president who understands the power of diplomacy and understands the strength that rests in understanding the significance of diplomacy and strengthening alliances. And you could see the relief and emotion from families and friends as they greeted their loved ones finally. Now the group will undergo a medical checkup at the Brook Army Medical Center in Texas. Track and field events are a big focus today in Paris. Other popular sports are on deck for today's Olympic competitions. Let's run through them. Here are some of the rundowns of the competitions you can watch in WREL. Our coverage gets started at 9 a.m. with men's beach volleyball. Team USA faces Spain, and then at 10 a.m., the track and field preliminary heats begin. That includes the men's 1500 meter, women's 100 meter, and the decathlon. At 11.45, you can check out men and women's preliminary swimming events. And then at 12.35, USA men's basketball team will face off against France. Folks, just a reminder, you can also watch replays on primetime in Paris starting at 8 p.m. tonight. And this afternoon, some of the fastest and strongest athletes in the world will hit the track at the Olympics in Paris. The U.S. has some big stars competing, including Raleigh native and Wakefield High graduate Veronica Fraley. She's competing in the discus throw this afternoon at 2.20. We talked to Veronica before she left for Paris, and she says when she competed in the World Championships last year, she was just happy to be there. But for her first Olympics, she wants to stand on that podium. And I think she will. Let's get to a, let's take a look at the medal count right now. This morning, Team USA still at, on top, 39 medals total. Team USA on top, host France, uh, host country France is second with 28, and then China is third with 26 medals. And it has been a very exciting morning for a family in Wilson. They were up very early to watch their family member and Team USA diver Greg Duncan's competition. WREL's Heidi Kirk joined the watch party and shared the special moments watching their loved ones in Paris. <laughs> Friends and family from across Wilson gathered together to cheer on Greg and his partner, Tyler. Take a look at them. As you can see, there's a lot of excitement here in the room and they came prepared. Look at this spread. Even though Paris is many thousands of miles away, they're bringing it right here to Wilson. And even though there was some stiff competition this morning, they say they're just proud to have watched Greg compete. It was kind of surreal because, you know, we've been waiting for this moment and we've seen all the pictures through the years and we've seen him in person diving. And then to know he's forever an Olympian. Now we've heard Greg is going to be hanging around Paris for a few days and cheering on his other friends at the Paris Olympics. And of course, the excitement here in Wilson will not die down. Heidi Kirk, WRL News in Wilson. And we caught up with Duncan after his dives and told him about everyone gathering to cheer for him. This is what he had to say to everyone. Well, thanks for watching. First and foremost, like I kind of just said, I wouldn't be that be here without them. So, you know, if you could tune in from anywhere, I appreciate it and I love you guys. It's amazing. That's the benefit of having a team here and a team overseas, right? We have a viewing guide on WRL.com where you can follow your favorite sports and athletes. You can find the complete schedule day by day, what's on each channel and what's streaming on WRL.com. Just search the words Olympics schedule. The show must go on for a Raleigh band after someone stole all of their equipment. Coming up, how the group is getting by with support from the community. And PNC Arena, like you have never seen it before, we are taking our first look at new designs for the event space, what could be included in the upcoming remodel.
Welcome back on your Friday morning. 813 as you look live over Chapel Hill this morning. Some sunshine there. I'm not feeling too bad right now, but it's going to get really hot today. Meteorologist Elizabeth Gardner outside on the WRL weather patio showing us a view of the garden while you're in the garden. Elizabeth, it's going to be really hot today. It's going to be another one of those days that, you know, we get to lunchtime and you're going to need to just take it inside and leave it there. And, you know, that can be difficult. You know, people have things to do. People have to work outside. But this is going to be the last day for the rest of the week into next week that we see extreme uh, heat like this. We do take a live look at the gardens here. It looks beautiful. Right now it's still comfortable. If you need to do something outside, now's the time to get it done. I'm here in the shade and it feels fine. I'm watching this cold front that's moving across the Midwest right now. You can see some thunderstorms along and ahead of that. That's going to move into North Carolina over the weekend and stall. That's going to help to bring our temperatures down. It's also going to bring us a pretty wet pattern. Anything that you have planned outside over the weekend, especially in the afternoons and evenings, uh, may be at risk of some scattered storms. We're looking at just some isolated storms for today, mostly around the evening commute. There's lunchtime, and you can see around 5, 6 o'clock, some of those storm cells start to pop up. We do have the potential for a few of those to become strong to severe. Now, that may continue overnight and in into the morning Saturday. There's 6 a.m. With, a, with an isolated shower, a little break, and then in the afternoon, a line could develop that could bring some severe storms. So we have a better chance for rain tomorrow. It's an 80% chance, and that line of storms will bring some heavy rain and possibly some severe weather as well. So keep that in mind. That's going to be late afternoon into the evening. And then Saturday night into Sunday, that front will continue to slide eastward, and it'll bring us a better chance for rain in our eastern counties on Sunday. It also will help to drop our temperatures. So we do have that level one risk for today and again Saturday, but not for Sunday. Our chances of rain will be a little lower for the three days today, tomorrow and Sunday, looking at anywhere from an inch and a half to two and a half inches. So some significant rainfall. We had started to chip away at our drought and we did even so, even more um, this week when the drought monitor came out. We're down to just 6% moderate drought across the state. And for our area, we just have a couple of patches of abnormally dry conditions. Ah, and we may be dealing with a tropical system next week off the coast of North Carolina. 80% chance that this develops, likely to have some impacts in Florida this weekend, and then middle of next week, it could be affecting the coast of North Carolina. It is likely to move uh, up the coast of Florida on the west side. The potential for tropical storm uh, watches and warnings later today for the west coast of Florida. We take a look at those model plots up the west coast of Florida this weekend, and then potentially back into the Atlantic. But some of the models have this as a very weak storm there, maybe just a tropical depression while others have it as a hurricane by the middle of next week. This is going to be one of the worst case scenarios that I'll show you here. You can see that system moving across Florida and then really developing a circulation by the time we get to late Monday into Tuesday and sitting off the coast or even right on the coast of, of North Carolina by Wednesday. Of course, the models have a lot of inconsistency right now. The storm hasn't actually developed. Once it does, the models will be able to pick up on it a lot better. I will feel more confident about what we'll expect here. What we can tell you for sure is we're not likely to have any tropical impacts at our beaches this weekend, but we do already have a moderate risk of rip currents. We're cooler over the weekend, 91 Saturday, 85 Sunday and then some highs in the 80s Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday. But those are days that we'll be watching the coast very carefully. All right, Elizabeth, happening now in the W.O. Traffic Center. We just want to update some breaking news. We've been following a crash on I-40 westbound has completely cleared. Uh, the shoulder of the road has reopened there on I-40 westbound near Airport Boulevard. But you can see uh, some uh, emergency vehicles still there, just uh, wrapping things up a little bit. But traffic is beginning to flow right now on I-40 westbound at a rather steady clip. And you can see what it looks like on our sensors this morning. It's just all yellow, just a bit of a slowdown this morning, maybe adding about one or two minutes to your commute time if you have to now navigate I-40 westbound this morning, so nothing to worry about uh, here on I-40 westbound, particularly if you have an uh, airport uh, flight and you need to get to the airport, no problems to report. We are monitoring a serious crash there in US-15 on Ferdinand Boulevard in the westbound lanes. Initially, we were seeing a little bit of a slowdown, but we're not seeing that at this point, so Ferdinand Boulevard is full, uh, free and clear this morning in both directions. Elsewhere, this incident just happened. In about 10 minutes, I'll let you know exactly what happened and whether or not it's going to up, uh, affect your morning commute at all. Uh, boy, you're not seeing any problems out on the Beltline this morning. There's a live look in the northern side of the Beltline. The westbound lanes are moving away from us on I-440 and Capitol Boulevard. 
All right, thanks, Ken. Tonight, the Raleigh band Harvey Street will still perform in Wrightsville Beach even after they say someone stole their equipment. The band is out roughly $30,000. Band members said security footage from their hotel in Denver this week showed someone unhitching the band's trailer and then taking off. They say some of the stolen instruments were from their childhood. For now, they'll make do with borrowed or slightly broken equipment. We still have our, our fingers and our musical skills, so the money can, can be made back eventually, but those instruments can never come back, and that's, that's the real sad part of all of this, I think. Yeah, that's terrible. A GoFundMe has already raised more than $20,000 to help the band purchase new equipment. They hope to use that new gear when they perform at the Lincoln Theater in downtown Raleigh September 12th. The man accused of using a sledgehammer to assault a Lowe's employee in the Durham, is in the Durham County Jail this morning. Durham police say 25-year-old Aaron Williams was taken into custody Wednesday night. He was wanted for robbery and assault with a deadly weapon with intent to kill, among other charges. The attack happened Saturday night at a Lowe's hardware store on Fayetteville Road, according to investigators. Williams is being held without bond. A spokesperson for Lowe's sent WREL a statement about this. They said safety is their top priority and they found the attack appalling. UNC's Campus Y Committee will have a special meeting to discuss recommendations for the future of the Campus Y building. This is the building that houses many student services and student-led social justice organizations. The Campus Y Committee is tasked with examining the future of the Campus Y building and making recommendations about its governance and use. The special meeting begins at 3 p.m. in the South Building. Two dogs are recovering after they were abandoned around Smithfield over the last two weeks. This female dog was left behind at a flea market this week. Investigators say someone rescued a male dog last week and an animal complaint led to Officer Julie Carroll to the area where she found the female dog injured. Now, back in May, WREL reported on an abandoned suitcase in front of a fire station with a dog and five puppies. Officer Carroll says this is happening more often in Johnston County. It's so hard to prove. You have to prove that it was intentional, like they were intentionally cruel. Just don't leave them out in the middle of nowhere. Just a reminder, there are places you can take a dog if you do not want it anymore. Witnesses say they saw a green car pull up to the flea market but didn't capture the license plate. The male dog is with a bulldog rescue group and the female dog is at the Johnston County Animal Services. Officer Carroll is considering adopting her. Oh, I like that. Well, the Trump campaign is facing more backlash over the former president's false claim about the racial identity of Vice President Kamala Harris. His running mate, J.D. Vance, defended the former president during a visit to the U.S.-Mexico border. Trump's point is that she is a chameleon. She presents a different face depending on the audience she speaks to. You don't want a person like that as president of the United States. And Vance went on to slam Harris for high numbers of migrants and fentanyl coming into the U.S. And the man accused of starting the park fire burning through parts of California did not enter a plea while in court yesterday. Ronnie Dean Stout II is charged with one felony count of arson. The judge gave his attorney more time to look at reports before entering a plea. Stout says the fire was an accident. The park fire is currently the fifth largest wildfire in California's history. Stout will appear in front of a judge again August 22nd. If convicted, he faces up to 25 years to life in prison. Colorado's governor says three wildfires burning in the state appear to be caused by humans. He says the state is in a good position to contain these fires. Four wildfires, in fact, near Denver led to hundreds of evacuations and pre-evacuation notices for people who live nearby. The federal government has agreed to pay 75 percent of the cost to fight these flames. One of the fires is considered to be secure. Teams are trying to contain the other three. We now have a better idea of what PNC Arena could look like in the future. Take a look at this. A design team presented its preliminary ideas to the owners of PNC Arena yesterday. The new facility could include a grab-and-go market for food and retail and more parking. Renderings also featured a beer garden, a team store, and a VIP lobby. The board will also consider adding a view bar and bunker suites. Renovation is expected to start next summer. These enhancements also go hand-in-hand with an agreement for the Canes owner to, de to develop land around the arena as well. That'll include shopping, dining, a music venue, and more.
Time is 822 this morning. Organizers in Lewisburg want to make sure that your children are safe while in the car this summer. Safe Kids NC, local first responders, and State Farm are partnering for a free car seat check later this morning. You can stop by the Walmart on Retail Way. That is between 10 a.m. and noon for this free inspection. According to Safe Kids Worldwide, motor vehicle crashes are the leading cause of death for children ages 1 through 12. <laughs> Coming up, one of America's classic pop stars will be the center of an upcoming biopic. More on the new Britney Spears story in the works by Universal Pictures. And for 50 years, the North Carolina Zoo has brought the wild world to our backyard. And so we are looking back at the zoo's lasting impression in Asheboro with some of these photos. As you get into your car, tune to WRAL News Plus on your radio in Raleigh on 99.3 FM, in Durham 96.5 FM, and everywhere on 101.5 HD3. Good morning. Time now is 826. I'm Michelle McConaughey. Happy Friday. Meteorologist Elizabeth Garter on the WRAL weather patio to explain to us why we're under that level one severe risk for today, Elizabeth. Yeah, we're looking at a cold front getting closer to us, and that's going to bring us that chance this afternoon for a few storms to become strong to severe. We'll have a better chance of that tomorrow. Another big story for today is our heat advisory. Once again, like yesterday, we're going to see the heat index climbing up to around 110 or so. But this is the last day that we should see a heat advisory. We won't see dangerous heat again really for the next seven days after today. It's still going to be hot, just not quite at the danger zone. 81 in Wilson, 78 in Durham, and 81 in Fayetteville. It's warming up here on the patio too. It's been fairly comfortable, but now we're starting to creep into the 80s. 81 Tarboro and Fayetteville is 80 in South Hill already and 81 in Rocky Mount. Walking the dog this afternoon, this evening, it's going to be extremely hot on the asphalt. So just be careful where you're walking the dog. All right, Elizabeth, happening now in the WRO Traffic Center. Just a couple of incidents to report. These incidents are right now on Hillsborough Street in east and the westbound lanes, but not really causing any major problems. I'll keep an eye on it for you and have another update at the bottom of the hour over on Fox 50. Also around the Triangle and surrounding communities, all the major routes are delay-free this morning. The Belt Line, 87 coming in from Nightdale. Also in Durham, look at I-885 in both directions, as well as the Durham Freeway, delay-free at this hour. Thanks, Ken. Two-way county schools have closed in the past two days due to HVAC problems and our excessive heat warning. There's a backlog on work orders for old HVAC systems. Wake County School Board Chair Chris Haggerty says they don't have enough staff to keep up with maintenance and repairs. And next on Fox 50, a landmark prisoner exchange brings three Americans home from Russia. And next on today, Snoop Dogg shares his adventures at the Olympics. Shot in 4K ultra high definition, your number one source for local news. WRAL News, coverage you can count on. Two things to know about. This afternoon, we have another heat advisory and a level one risk for severe storms. I'll walk you through the timeline for how it will feel. Now on Fox 50, the Biden administration made a deal to bring Americans home from Russian custody. The emotional reunion for families now back on U.S. soil. Two Wake County schools have been closed over the past two days because of ongoing HVAC issues. Coming up when parents can expect an update on when students can return to the classroom. And local talent goes for the gold in Paris today. Competing in the 2024 Summer Games, we'll hear from family cheering them on from home. It is such an exciting time for everybody competing in the Olympics, especially when it's local, right? We love it. Thanks for joining us. I'm Michelle McConaughey. No, I'm Chris Lovingood. Yeah, I can't wait to see that story, too. It's just so happy to see yeah. them waiting yeah. on, praising their loved one, waiting for them to come home. And we get to start here first. When, uh, we start with weather, I think, for with, with media laws. Ah, goodness, I am tongue-tied today. <laughs> it's media, Friday. It is Friday. <laughs> Elizabeth, please take the stand. <laughs> it is Friday. Yes, yes, yes. Um, so here's a look at our garden. And of course, it looks pretty out here right now. Uh, before the sun popped up over the building over there, it was feeling pretty comfortable. But boy, that sun is getting higher and higher and the temperature is climbing along with it. And we do have one more day of dangerous heat today before we see a pattern change for the weekend. Right now it is 78 degrees with a dew point of 73. So it's definitely warm and sticky. Could feel as hot as 110 this afternoon. So it's just one more day where you want to take it easy and just don't overdo it outside. We're going to climb all the way up to 100 by lunchtime and it'll still feel feel like 102 through 8 p.m. So 
So um, take it seriously one more day and then we see that change. We do have a level one risk for severe storms this afternoon. It's likely to be pretty late today, not until say late afternoon into the evening commute time. And it's a 30 to 40% chance for today, but it's an 80% chance tomorrow. So we're going to go over that coming up in just a little bit. Looking at 98 for the high temperature today and then down to 91 tomorrow. Tropical outlook looking very interesting. We're up to an 80% chance that this system could develop in the tropics and then move up the west coast of Florida. Then it takes a right turn across Florida and moves out into the Atlantic. And we're looking at a wide range of what could happen here. It could be a weaker system uh, as a tropical depression or weak tropical storm, or it could be a hurricane. The storm hasn't developed yet, and so we're waiting for that. The models will get a little better uh, grasp on what it may do once it's actually formed. So keep checking in with us, especially as we have that threat for the Carolina coast. Um, for uh, the next couple of days, we may see tropical storm watches and warnings posted for Florida. All right, having now in the WRO Traffic Center, a couple of incidents to report on Hillsborough Street here in Wake County, both east and westbound lanes. This is in the westbound lane, then Linda Murphy Drive, and this incident is on uh, Hillsborough Street in the eastbound lane near Cox Avenue. And based on our sensors, we're not picking up any major delays in that area of Hillsborough Street, but just watch for some police activity if you happen to be on Hillsborough Street this morning. We've been monitoring this serious crash on US 15 on Ferdinand Boulevard in the westbound lanes. We're not picking up any delays in our sensors on Fordham Boulevard this morning. But again, just look for some police activity if you happen to be navigating Fordham Road this morning. Elsewhere around the triangle, all the major runs really at this hour delay free, which is a good thing this morning, especially on a Friday morning. Why do you want to get to your destination on time? Here's a live look at the northern side of the Beltline. The westbound lanes are coming toward us, uh, moving at a nice steady clip. There's a live traffic camera courtesy of the traffic cam network at I-440 and Lake Boone Trail. Uh, so if you're getting ready to head out this morning, you shouldn't have any trouble trouble, particularly if you're on any of our major roads. Thanks, Ken. The heat is causing major disruptions at Wake County schools. Moore Square Magnet Middle School will be closed today because of air conditioning issues. It's the second Wake County school to close this week. WRL's Kelsey Coffey shares when parents can expect an update sometime from crews working to fix the problem. Students won't be headed through the front entrance of Moore Square Middle today. You heard earlier about that heat advisory. With feels like temperatures over 100, this is one of the worst times to be without AC. Students were dismissed earlier yesterday from Moore Square Middle. This is one of two Wake County schools that were forced to close in the past two days, all because of HVAC problems. Lake Myra Elementary students are returning to the classroom today after closing Wednesday. Schools closed more than 40 times in the last year because of failing HVAC systems. This from Wake County School Board Chair Chris Haggerty. He says multiple schools report HVAC issues every week. There's a backlog on work orders for older HVAC systems. Many of our HVAC units are aging and we just don't have enough specialists on staff to keep up with maintenance and repairs. Parents, you all should be on the lookout today for an update on when students can return to the classroom. We'll be sure to let you know when that update is released. Kelsey Coffey, WRL News in Raleigh. Developing this morning, three newly freed prisoners are back on American soil. They were freed during a significant prisoner exchange with Russia. The plane touched down at Joint Base Andrews in Maryland just before midnight. The group includes Evan Gershkovich, a Wall Street Journal reporter, Alsu Karmasheva, an editor for Radio Free Europe, and Paul Whelan, a U.S. Marine veteran. President Joe Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris was there to greet them, and Biden says that getting them back to the U.S. is a great relief. This is about the essence of who we are as a country. It really is about personal relationships, it's about family, it's about being able to have access to your own, the people you love and you adore. The group was also met by family and friends. They were then taken to a medical center in Texas for a checkup. It's a big day for some of the Olympic Games' most popular events. Track and field will bring in another opportunity for Team USA to go for gold. Here's a look at some of the big events happening today on WREL. Our coverage gets started at 9 a.m. with men's beach volleyball. Team USA faces Spain. Then at 10 a.m., the track and field preliminary heats begin. And at 1235, USA men's basketball team faces off against France. At 3 p.m., you can check out NC State swimmer Niles Korstenage compete for the Netherlands in the 100-meter butterfly semifinal. You can also catch replays on primetime in Paris starting at 8 o'clock tonight. 
Our Ollie track and field athlete competing this afternoon in the Olympics is getting a lot of attention online because of a recent post. Veronica Fra Fraley is a grad student at Vanderbilt and she's also getting her second master's degree while competing in the discus throw. Kind of busy, right? Well, she shared this on X yesterday. Quote, I compete in the Olympic Games tomorrow and can't even pay my rent. Well, she went on to talk about how her school helps partially, but it's not enough. Now, she posted a follow up saying she was not bashing her school, but actually the name, image and likeness system. Then rapper Flavor Flav tweeted her offering to pay her rent. Alexis Ohanian, a tech millionaire and Serena Williams' husband chimed in on this, saying they would cover the rest, and they paid her rent for the entire year. Now, as for the competition today, you can watch Veronica compete this afternoon at 2.20. And it's been a very exciting morning for a family in Wilson. Up early to watch their family member and Team USA diver Greg Duncan's competition, WRL's Heidi Kirk joined the watch party and shared the special moments watching their loved one in Paris. <laughs> Friends and family from across Wilson gathered together to cheer on Greg and his partner, Tyler. Take a look at them. As you can see, there's a lot of excitement here in the room and they came prepared. Look at this spread. Even though Paris is many thousands of miles away, they're bringing it right here to Wilson. And even though there was some stiff competition this morning, they say they're just proud to have watched Greg compete. It was kind of surreal because, you know, we've been waiting for this moment and we've seen all the pictures through the years and we've seen him in person diving. And then to know he's forever an Olympian. Now we've heard Greg is going to be hanging around Paris for a few days and cheering on his other friends at the Paris Olympics. And of course, the excitement here in Wilson will not die down. Heidi Kirk, WRL News in Wilson. And we caught up with Duncan after his dives and told him about everyone who gathered to cheer him on. Well, thanks for watching. First and foremost, like I kind of just said, I wouldn't be that be here without them. So, you know, if you could tune in from anywhere, I appreciate it and I love you guys. It's amazing. Let's take a look at the medal count right now. This morning, Team USA still on top with 39 medals. Host country France is in second with 28. And then China, third with 26 medals. And just a reminder, we do have a viewing guide on WRL.com. That is where you can follow your favorite sports and athletes. Find the complete schedule day by day. What is on each channel and streaming on WRL.com. Just search the word Olympic schedule. All right, today marks 50 years of the North Carolina Zoo. The zoo first opened in Asheboro on August 2nd, 1974. It is the world's largest natural habitat zoo. These are some pictures from back when it first opened. Zookeepers, guests, and a pair of Galapagos tortoise as well. One of those tortoises is still going strong. The female and the pair now lives at the Riverbank Zoo in South Carolina. 20 years after being convicted for murder, Scott Peterson is breaking his silence. More on the exclusive interviews being developed into an all-new docu-series releasing later this month. And a young fan from Chapel Hill had the night of her life seeing Taylor Swift in Germany. But a magical moment turned into a night she will never forget. And that excessive heat is going to build in today. You're looking live over Wilson. Meteorologist Elizabeth Gardner has a look at the forecast after the break. Some people are taking advantage of the nice weather outside over at Pinehurst. Clearly hitting the links this morning. Not a bad one to do it, but still kind of a hot one to do it. We've got meteorologist Elizabeth Gardner outside on the WREL weather patio. I don't know, you kind of want to be out there hitting the links this morning, Elizabeth? i tell you what, Chris, that is one thing that I for sure am not as a golfer. <laughs> um, you know, let me run around in the woods, put me in my kayak, on my mountain bike, but I'm not much of a golfer. Uh, we take a look at the gardens this morning. Um, you know, the sun is coming up. It is starting to get a little bit hotter out here. It was pretty comfortable about an hour ago. It is 78 degrees right now, but we'll also see a bump up. We'll get a new uh, temperature in from the weather service here at about uh, 10 minutes or so from the airport and it's likely to be on up into the 80s. It's um, I'm starting to feel it out here. We'll see a high of 98 this afternoon, which was our high yesterday, but with lots of humidity in the atmosphere, it is likely to feel a little bit hotter even than yesterday, well into the triple digits with the heat index. Typically, I would say, hey, look at this. Head to the lake over the weekend. Gorgeous uh, photo from uh, Renee Cantrell, our weather 
watcher over there at White Lake. It just looks like a tropical island. The thing about it is we're going to change the pattern for the weekend. It will be a little bit cooler. It's also going to be a lot wetter. So you still may you know, have to kind of keep it inside during the afternoons. Go to WRL.com, search weather watchers. We would love to see your photos. We have a heat advisory that goes into effect at 11 o'clock this morning. And very quickly, we climb into the triple digits. It could feel like up to 110 this afternoon on the triangle. 97 in Raleigh, 96 in Durham, and 97 in Fayetteville. Um, not quite a record. The record high for today is 101. And we'll be above that in terms of our heat index. Heat index forecast should feel like 108 this afternoon in Durham and Fayetteville. 107 in Clinton and Southern Pines could feel like 110 in Raleigh this afternoon. This will be the last day for a while that we have this intense heat, however. Um, by the time we get to tomorrow and Sunday, it, it bumps down some. Still going to feel hot and sticky, but we get into more cloud cover and a better chance for rain, and at least we come out of the heat advisory. Afternoon thunderstorms, some of those strong. We may see a line of storms that develops late Saturday, and uh, we do have a level one risk for severe storms on Saturday. And then it's cooler Sunday, 85 degrees, a 70% chance. A lot of those storms on Sunday could be in the eastern part of the state. Keep checking back if you have some outdoor plans over the weekend. Level one risk for today and again for tomorrow. It's all because of that cold front. See that front moving just west of Nashville, some thunderstorms along with that. That's going to push into our part of North Carolina and stall over the weekend. That'll completely change our weather pattern. More cloud cover, some cooler temperatures and a better chance for thunderstorms. Late this afternoon into the evening, we'll begin to see some of those storms cropping up and that'll continue overnight tonight and into the day Saturday and then Sunday as well. But Saturday and Sunday will be the wettest two days of the next seven. 80% chance on Saturday, 70% chance on Sunday, and then we're back down to a 30 to 40% chance. And our temperatures stay cooler too. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, we'll see highs in the 80s. But we may have something else to deal with. There could be a tropical system sitting off the coast of North Carolina as early as Tuesday. So keep checking back. Jeff Hogan in the WR Live Center with the brand new Bureau of Labor and Statistics releasing its brand new jobs report for the month of July. And the headline is right in the middle. This is the official release. The unemployment rate rises to 4.3 percent. I'm going to just break it down for you just a little bit as that job growth has slowed more than expected. And what that does is it puts a bit of fear into uh, the fact that the economy has slowed down too quickly, could lead to a recession. So if you look the total number of jobs added in July, 114,000, far less than the 175,000 that were expected to be hired in that time frame. And the unemployment rate, as I showed you, it's risen to 4.3 percent. It was expected to come in at 4.1 percent, which is exactly where it was. What it's doing to stocks right now, Dow futures fall right now ahead of the market opening more than 500 points. That would be two consecutive days at 500 points or better in the red. 1,000 points in two days. The stock market is freaking out a little bit about this. It is. NASDAQ also down about 500 points as well. Goodness. Thank you, Jeff. The Illinois sheriff whose deputy is charged with fatally shooting Sonia Massey says the blame is on the deputy and the deputy alone. Sheriff Jack Campbell said former deputy Sean Grayson had been properly trained by the agency. Body camera video shows Massey was shot and killed by the sheriff's deputy after calling law enforcement to her home for help last month. Grayson was fired and has pleaded not guilty to first degree murder charges. For the first time in 20 years, convicted murderer Scott Peterson is breaking his silence. In 2004, Peterson was convicted for the deaths of his wife, Lacey, and their unborn son, Connor. He sat down for a new docuseries called Face to Face with Scott Peterson. It's the first time he has participated in an on-camera interview since 2003. Peterson has always maintained his innocence. Earlier this year, the Los Angeles Innocence Project announced that they were taking on his case. The three-part docuseries will premiere on Peacock August 20th. The Justice Department will now give whistleblowers money for reporting a crime happening in corporate America. The agency will pay out people who report financial and corporate misconduct. However, and this is key, the tip must lead to a successful prosecution. The payment will be a portion of whatever assets the company forfeits. And folks, that could mean millions of dollars. A judge in California has thrown out a jury verdict ordering the NFL to pay more than four and a half billion dollars for antitrust violations surrounding its Sunday ticket package. A lawsuit was filed by subscribers who claimed they were overcharged for the package. In a court filing yesterday, the judge brought up issue with the expert witnesses in the trial and decided they should have been excluded. The lawsuit covered nearly two and a half million subscribers and 48,000 businesses who paid for the package. In a statement, the NFL said it was grateful 
for the ruling. And a judge happening today, a statue of Kobe Bryant and his daughter Gigi will be unveiled outside of the Crypto.com arena in L.A. That's according to sources who share the information with ESPN. The statue is the second of three planned to honor the Los Angeles Lakers player. Kobe and his daughter Gigi and seven others died in a helicopter crash in 2020. The first statue in the series was unveiled back in February. Today's date, 8 2 24, is special because Bryant's uniform numbers were 8 and 24, and Gigi wore the number 2 on court. Bill and Ted co stars Keanu Reeves and Alex Winter will reunite for a new project. Plus, a pop icon's life story is coming to the big screen. Ashley Dvorkin has those stories and more in the Hollywood Nation. <laughs> Jost lands a new gig, Driver returns to the stage, and Britney gets a biopic in the Hollywood Nation. Britney Spears' story is coming to the big screen. According to Variety, Universal Pictures acquired the rights to the singer's memoir, The Woman in Me, and will be developing the book into a film. Wicked director John M. Chu is on board to helm the biopic. Keanu Reeves will make his Broadway debut next year. The John Wick actor will star in the revival of Waiting for Godot. He will play alongside his Bill & Ted co-star Alex Winter when the production opens fall of 2025. Speaking of theater, Adam Driver will star in the off-Broadway revival of Hold On To Me, Darling. The screen and stage actor will lead as Strings McCrane, a country music icon who abandons his superstardom for the simple life after his mother dies. The show will run for 13 weeks at the Lucille Lortel Theater. Preview performances kick off September 24th, ahead of opening night, October 16th. Colin Jost is heading to Prime Video. The Saturday Night Live star will host the streamer's upcoming pop culture Jeopardy spinoff series. The show will have the same answer and question format as the classic and beloved trivia game, but will focus on entertainment topics including music, film, TV, sports, and more. Filming is set to start this month. In Hollywood, Ashley Dvorkin, Fox News. Finally, a Jeopardy I could actually win at. A nine-year-old in Chapel Hill received what most Swifties would love to have Taylor Swift's 22 hat, right? Lucia Hugelmeyer was in Germany with her family. They were there to watch Swift's concert in Hamburg. Now, at first, she was in the back, but eventually she worked her way up to close. That paid off for her. She was among several young fans to be invited to dance next to the stage. And her skills earned her a spot on the stage to meet Taylor Swift. She was like walking through to check out who would be like the 22 kid and they just picked me because I was dancing my heart out. <laughs> Swift gives away the 22 hat to one lucky fan at all of her concerts. Lucia is one of those lucky fans and she says that she'll keep the autographed hat forever. Family movie nights and a barbecue festival are all ahead this weekend in the Triangle. WREL Lifestyle editor Kathy Hanrahan has your weekend guide to Out and About's best bets. Kick off the weekend by enjoying a free screening of the Barbie movie in Moore Square in downtown Raleigh. It's all part of this month's First Friday celebration. The event also includes a vendor market and live music. Also on Friday night, downtown Cary Park will host a free screening of the classic film Jurassic Park. The fun starts at 6 p.m. with a dino-themed scavenger hunt. Also in Cary this weekend, the annual Beer, Bourbon, and Barbecue Festival is happening at Booth's Amphitheater. On Friday and Saturday, enjoy samples of craft beer and bourbon, plus all the barbecue you want to taste. Tickets are still available. These are just a few ways to get out and about this weekend. Kathy Hanrahan, WRAL News. Guys, we didn't forget about you. Here's a look at your winning lottery numbers. We'll be right back.